One of the easiest ways to control bleeding is by using a commercially produced tourniquet. Now, if you don't have one, then an improvised tourniquet is probably better than nothing, but just know that improvised tourniquets have a higher chance of failure. Not all bleeding will require a tourniquet, and one of the most common questions I often get is, how will I know if a bleed needs a tourniquet? Well, let me put it this way. If you come across a bleeding victim and you exclaim to yourself, wow, that's a lot of blood, and you believe they're bleeding to death, then the use of a tourniquet is probably appropriate. Just remember that the role of the tourniquet is to control bleeding and allow you to use your hands for doing other things like calling 911 or opening an airway or moving them to safety. Many of you may be under the impression that tourniquets are dangerous and something bad might happen if you use one. Well, it won't. Something bad has already happened and tourniquets are no longer thought of as a last resort intervention. If someone is bleeding to death, a tourniquet should be the first option to control bleeding. If applied properly, you won't make things worse. Applying a tourniquet correctly is simple to learn and anyone can do it. Let's look at the four basic steps to applying a windlass style tourniquet, like the combat application tourniquet or CAT shown here. First, apply the tourniquet high and tight. What I mean by that is place it as high up on the bleeding limb as possible and pull the strap as tight as possible. Second, when pulling the strap tight, it is advantageous to orient the strap and buckle so you're pulling it towards your body as you can generate much more power and force pulling toward you than pushing away from you. Third, turn the windlass. If you pulled the strap tight enough, then you should only be able to turn the windlass rod one or two times, three at the most. If you're able to turn it more than three times, then chances are the strap is not tight enough. And finally, check to make sure there is no pulse in that limb after placing the tourniquet. If bleeding seems to have stopped, but there is still a pulse in that affected limb, then another serious medical complication could develop. There are a few teaching points about tourniquet placement that you have to remember. First is that tourniquets hurt. And this does not mean that you've done something wrong or that it's been placed incorrectly. We're compressing good tissue along with injured tissue, and that hurts. Remember, you are applying a tourniquet because you're concerned that they were going to bleed to death. Never loosen a tourniquet, and don't let the patient convince you to stop because it hurts or feels too tight. Because applied properly, a tourniquet will hurt quite a bit. Another type of tourniquet is the stretch, wrap, and tuck tourniquet or the SWAT T. Unlike the cat, the SWAT T is elastic, sort of like a giant flattened inner tube, and it can be stretched around the limb to provide sufficient compression to stop hemorrhaging. The SWAT T is ideal for children because windless tourniquets are often less effective around such small limbs. Wrap the SWAT T above the wound area or over the wound area if you're using it as a compression dressing. Wrap once around the extremity to ensure the tourniquet is secure against the skin. Pull the SWAT T tight against the extremity until the graphic diamonds on that tourniquet become squares. And this will indicate that enough tension is being applied to stop severe bleeding. Continue to wrap the SWAT T around the extremity, maintaining the compression by continuing to pull the tourniquet while wrapping. Once near the end of the tourniquet, hold the last wrap up to create a loop and just tuck the end of the tourniquet under this loop. The SWAT T will grip onto itself and remain in place. Regardless of the type of tourniquet you apply, be sure to check for continued occlusion or return of a pulse as loosening can occur after application. 